So while this rarely happens, it did happen, so I figured I'd do a video about it. Um, occasionally, I call these stubborn access points. And the reason I call it stubborn is it's adopted, it's working, it's all working fine with the Unify system, except we have a firmware version problem. 3.7 and we're on 3.9 is the current firmware. Now this was an older one that we're adding to this uh, and that might be part of the problem as well. It's just a, little, a few, ver it's uh, several versions behind. Maybe that's what caused it. So I don't necessarily know the cause, but don't worry, there's an easy solution. Now, if you're not familiar with Unify and how every one of their devices work, there is a basic Linux kernel in each one of them. It also has a shell loaded on each one of them. And I'm gonna show you how to access a shell and manually upgrade the firmware. It's actually pretty pain-free and easy and doesn't take too much command line stuff, but it's nice that they give you access to all this behind the scenes. So I'll leave this here. This is the step-by-step -step on how to do it uh, right up from Unify, but I'm actually gonna walk you through it as well and kind of show you how this command line works for doing this. And I actually have a couple different options, whether you're doing this in Windows or Linux, I'm doing this in Linux, which is, of course is gonna change how you access things in SSH. So the first thing we need to identify is what model is it? So Unify APHD. So we go over here, find the Unify APHD. Here's a 3954, go to download. I accept and we can download the file. I've already downloaded it onto my computer. Now we're gonna go over to the command line side of things, but before we do that, we gotta get a password because you can't just SSH in without a password. Now the passwords for SSH are all stored in the same spot. You can go over here to site, then you're gonna scroll down and click this to show the password. Now the username, which can be changed, is defaulted to whoever created the site. So when Eric created this site, this is the username that showed up on here. So I could change it, but I'll leave it at Eric because I'm fine with that. Also note, Eric, the E is capitalized. That is important because when you do the SSH login, it needs to match the username and it is case sensitive. Now an alternative option is you can add SSH keys in here. I'm not gonna get in too far off topic, but it's kind of convenient. So if you don't wanna use password authentication, the Unify devices all support key authentication. And this is really convenient because, you know, in this case, we have a few dozen devices on here. When you put your key in, it distributes them all for that site. Now this is a per site setting. So this password when Eric uh, created the site and it generated a random gibberish password, which can be changed. It does it only for this site and not for all sites. That's kind of an important aspect to think about here. So let's go in and SSH in. Now, Go back over here to devices and we'll look at the IP address is 192.168.3.172. Okay, so we have the file downloaded. I'm in my downloads folder. So we're actually not gonna SSH in first. We're going to SCP the file over. So we're gonna secure copy. There's the file name. And we're gonna go to eric at 192.168.3.172. Now, after we put SCP colon slash TMP slash FW update dot bin. Now, let me walk you through what this command does real quick. We're using secure copy to the file we downloaded to Eric at 192.168.3.172, the IP that needs to be updated, colon slash, this is important you have this in here, fwupdate.bin. Now in the instructions that Unify has, I'm just shortening it a step because they say copy the file over and rename it fwupdate.bin. But by doing this, you are renaming it. So the important part is when it's all done, the temp folder has fwupdate.bin in it. And I've got the password inside the clipboard. So we're just gonna paste that in. File transferred right over. Okay, great. So now we can just SSH in. And there's that file, that SW, that FW update.bin file that we're looking for. So we're just gonna leave it back in home directory. Now this is the easy part. It's, you can copy and paste the command. I'm just gonna copy and paste it right in, but that's it. Firmware files, it's syswrapper.sh upgrade to ampersand. It looks, finds a firmware file and it automatically uh, rebooted itself. So happens really fast. That's normal. It's uh, executing it in the background, but it has to kick me out to make that happen. Now, because we did this and didn't inform the controller, the controller thinks everything's going on fine with this. 
and uh, it's going to miss a heartbeat in a second. It's going to fail, and then it's going to reconnect with the new firmware, and that's it. It's finished. See, there we go. Heartbeat missed, and it's all set with the latest firmware. That's it. It's really simple to complete these. And like I said, this is one of the reasons I really like the Unify. It's not uh, not too hard to troubleshoot. Don't get scared of the command line or uh, opening up and getting into a terminal on these. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.